Yo, yo, what up, what up, y'all, man, thank y'all so much for dropping by, man I'm just going to dive right into it, man, because we already know we have so many people Have so much God of War, Ragnarok content out there right now But I would like to pretty much, you know, drop this video for the people that don't have a PS5 That don't have a PS4 Pro and that can't really experience God of War Ragnarok But they would like They're interested And they would like to know What the game is about You know Like is this game cool Is it awesome Is it really A 10 out of 10 You know Because A lot of people say It's a 10 out of 10 But they're not really Showing you Why the things That this game Brings to the table To make you feel like It deserves that high score So Today man I got some journalists That's pretty much Going to go over You know The side quests The upgrades And You already know That's right It's even better So I, I, I'm not going to Release that information But you guys are going to see um, Some things in this video That may actually Have some people Considering getting the PS5 Or even Going out getting the PS4 Pro If they can't find the PS5 Just so they can jump Back into the PlayStation ecosystem Or maybe e Even if they want to Basically Jump into the PlayStation Plus Premium ecosystem On their PCs And uh, Steam Deck Laptops and tablets um no 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 not tablets just pc steam deck um and uh can jump into the playstation plus premium ecosystem so that they can try out god of war 2018 because i know a lot of people are kind of curious about it because um you already know all the fanboys are hyping this game up all the ponies are hyping this game up you know 10 out of 10 most people are going to want to try something that's hyped up like that they're going to be like tempted to say okay well let's see what this game really is about so i'm not going to waste too much time on this man so without further ado man we're just going to dive right into it man so here we go oh we don't want to intimidate him one of the first major side quests you'll find in Ragnarok, you'll receive in service of Asgard by following the main story after arriving in Svartalfheim. Speak to the dwarf sitting down in the bar once he has a blue favor marker over his head to add it to your log. And then it will be easy to follow once you're back in the boat in the open lake area. This quest will net you the first Muspelheim seed half, as well as a shiny new armor set. You'll also find out a bit more about Mimir's past. After finishing the first main story quest in Alfheim, grow a secret, talk to Sindri at the blacksmith station to unlock Secret of the Sands. Following this quest will make exploration in the Barrens area of Alfheim much easier. Did you... to come and find me? Upon finishing the Reckoning quest while in Vanaheim, talk to the blacksmiths to unlock the mysterious Orb quest. While the quest isn't much on its own, it will guide you along the path in the Vanaheim River Delta to collect the pieces for Luna's Lost Armor, one of the best armor sets in the game. Freya's Missing Piece is a side quest that shouldn't be missed for story implications alone, as it really explores Freya's story arc. Make sure you unlock it by breaking this log open by the Mystic Gateway next to Freyr's camp in Vanaheim, and continuing along the new path by boat rather than walking through the gateway. After finishing what you want to in Vanaheim, travel back to Alfheim with Freya now that you can open special chisel gates, and take your sled to the west side of the Barrens to dispel this door. Song of the Sands will be added to your log automatically after entering this area, and finishing it will disperse the sandstorm, just like in the Barrens. I do not need a snack. We've put these quests together because you can complete them simultaneously. After finishing the main story quest Forging Destiny, talk to Durlin instead of going through the Mystic Gateway to unlock Spirit of Rebellion. Following that questline to Dragon Beach will take you to the Lost Treasure starting point as well. Completing Spirit of Rebellion and the Lost Treasure will bring you to the chest with the second Muspelheim seed half. For those math nerds keeping score, that makes a hole at this point. As well as a ton of crafting resources, hex silver, and even Mountain Splitter, a new runic attack for your drop near spear. They're pretty standard quests as far as the story goes, but the rewards are definitely worth it. After completing the Vanaheim quest Creatures of Prophecy, you'll unlock the Scent of Survival quest automatically, but the choice to follow it right then and there is yours. Completing it will lead to an entirely new giant optional area and multiple new side quests, so make sure you don't ignore it. Our two first. Much like God of War 2018, there are credits after the credits. Talk to the blacksmiths after descending down to the lake in Midgard and find an important story quest. 
After finishing the main story, return to Niflheim and take this alternate path to the left before the Raven Tree to find a new area. Follow it down to the bottom for a cool story surprise. This place goes deep. And there you have it, a list of the most important side quests you'll come across in God of War Ragnarok. It's been a while since the last time we saw Kratos, Atreus, and Mamiya, both in Midgard and in real life. And if you're anything like this trio, your grand adventuring skills might be a bit rusty as you pick up the sticks. To help make sure you can get through Fimblewinter, and more importantly, the opening hours of the game, we've put together a list of our picks for the best skills, upgrades, and unlocks to get early on in God of War Ragnarok. Huh, that might be my best piece yet today. There won't be too much to customize from the very, very start of the game, except for your weapon skills. So let's begin there. Glacial Rake is a powerful ability that you can get fairly quickly if you save up your XP, and it's absolutely worth the relatively short wait. You should be able to collect the necessary 750 experience points if you save it all until just before returning home after tracking the bear in the opening hour of the game. By holding R1, Kratos drags his leviathan axe through the ground, sending forward a shockwave of ice. This attack is very fast to use, it almost always applies frost to the enemies that it strikes, and it can hit many targets in its path. There are other skills you could purchase earlier, such as the ranged Vengeful Sickle ability, but Glacial Rake is the strongest singular skill that you can buy for the axe when you're starting out. Once you pick up the Blades of Chaos after the first hour, you have a whole other set of skills to unlock. There aren't too many options here to start out with, but we recommend saving your XP after Glacial Rake and putting the points towards Hyperion Grapple for 750 XP, which you should be able to buy right before your fight with the Huntress. By holding R1 when aiming, Kratos will yank himself towards enemies, rather than pulling them towards him. This inflicts a large amount of stun, and also allows Kratos to get close at a moment's notice. Once you visit Sindri's house for the first time, you'll have two shield options to pick from. The Dauntless Shield is the classic God of War 2018 experience, rewarding parries for last second blocks. By comparison, the Stonewall Shield cannot parry enemies, but it absorbs damage from normal and even yellow attacks that can normally only be blocked by parrying with the Dauntless Shield. When you charge either shield by parrying or absorbing damage, you can unleash that energy at your enemies by double tapping L1. If you're looking for a more straightforward defense, we recommend starting with the Stonewall Shield. The upcoming enemies have some unpredictable parry timings and ranged attacks, so you may be grateful for the extra defense from the stone wall. You can also change your shield whenever you see the Holdra Brothers, though be warned that you have to upgrade each shield separately, so consider figuring out which one works best for you and sticking with it for a while. Use the frozen flame you received for defeating the Huntress to upgrade your axe and increase the number of skills available. If you only bought Glacial Rake and Hyperion Grapple, you should have just enough points to buy anything you want for the axe. We suggest purchasing Serpent's Snare for a satisfying and powerful heavy attack that makes your target double as a ranged frost detonation bomb. You can't really go wrong with your weapon skills from here on out, but here are a few of our favorites that you might want to try first as you explore Svartalfheim. Permafrost empowers your axe with frost as you do more damage without getting hit, which is a nice passive elemental buff. And Vengeful Sickle allows your axe to repeatedly strike an enemy after you charge a light ranged attack. For the Blades of Chaos, you could get the Blazing Explosion ability for 750 XP to increase the power of your ranged heavy attack. You can also get Rushing Chaos to add a new sprinting attack into your repertoire, but if nothing else here excites you too much, you can always hang on to your points and pick one of the skills that you will unlock for upgrading the blades, like the Immolation skill, which is the fire version of the Permafrost skill that we just mentioned. When you're talking to Brock or Sindri, you can also have a look at their available armor. You're probably only going to have enough hack silver to purchase one set at level 1, but here's what you can expect from each set of gear when it is one level stronger and it gains an extra perk. The Fortified Husk set strengthens Kratos' block and parries, adding a chance for you to retaliate against your foes with an explosive counterattack. The Vidar's Might set is all about dealing more damage at the end of a combo, and empowering Kratos to do more damage afterwards for a period of time. 
Both sets are viable options, but if we had to recommend one over the other, the Fortified Husk set will keep your health above zero for longer as you learn the combat systems. Each set of armor is made to work together, and you will receive compound bonuses for equipping the same armor pieces of a set, but you can also mix and match these if you want, say, a more protective piece of chest armor paired with wrist and waist armor that provides you with more damage. There's only two Leviathan Axe handles to choose from early on, so we recommend continuing to use the Furious Maul grip that you equip from the chest back at the house. This is as good a time as any to mention that unlike the first game, you can keep your starting equipment and upgrade it all the way through to the end game, but it will be decidedly average in comparison to other equipment while it is still at lower levels. When you finally have enough points to unlock something for Atreus, you'll want to unlock his Watchful Protector ability. His skill tree is quite small at the moment, so you might feel inclined to save up for something more powerful. But Watchful Protector is a good one to get now, as it allows Atreus to distract enemies if Kratos is becoming overwhelmed, which is invaluable during tougher fights. When you first arrive in Svartalfheim, there will be a number of side areas where you can beat your boat. In this area where you learn how to freeze geysers, there's a Nornia chest with a health upgrade inside. Jump up on the tall outcropping by freezing the geyser closest to the beach and climbing on top. You should see all three Nornia seals from here, so break them with your axe and then open the chest. There's also another chest further in the wetlands. When you see a golden chest overlooking the river, turn to the west and row underneath the rocky bridge. Clear out the enemies, and then rotate three seal locks to match the symbols on this chest. There's one behind the geyser, one above the feeding pit, and one on top of the upper area. Now open up the chest and claim your horn of blood mead to increase your rage meter. The following pieces of gear can only be obtained by going to the optional area in Svartalfheim, so if you go straight to Durlin, then you will need to come back for these side quests and gear later. It will be a while before you can do that, so if you've been struggling at all up until this point, then these pieces of equipment can help you out a lot. If you decide to row into the Bay of Bounty for the in-service of Asgard quest to shut down the mining rigs, you will earn Nidavellir Ore, a unique material which can be used to craft a unique set of armor. The Nidavellir's Finest Armor set not only offers substantial increases to strength, defense, and vitality, meaning you will take less damage and have more health without losing much strength, but the chest piece will also grant a burst of health when you stun and grab an enemy. The other pieces of the armor set slow down the stun decay on enemies, and it's easily the strongest armor you'll get early on, so it's definitely worth clearing all three rigs before heading back to speak to Durlin. While in the Bay of Bounty, beach on the central island and go to the west of Sindri's shop. Here you'll fight a mini-boss Draugr known as the Hateful, and once defeated it will drop a number of things, including the Cursed Empress handles for your Blades of Chaos. These handles have a low chance of granting an increase to strength and runic damage every time you hit someone with them, while also providing a better stat increase than the basic steel handles you start with. Finally, to complete your new look with gear in every slot, you'll want a new shield rond. To do this early, you need to complete the side quest The Weight of Chains, also in the Bay of Bounty. I'll do my best not to spoil it for you here. You start the quest by going to the island near the geyser, to the north of Sindri's central island where we just were. Follow the quest until you zipline over to this outcropping to the east. Open up the chest here to find the Rond of Aggravation. This rond is best paired with the Dauntless shield, as it rewards you with a rage burst on successful parries. But even if you don't want to parry with your shield, it has excellent stat increases to defense, vitality, and luck. So it's worth getting if you want to move away from basic equipment. Hopefully these tips help you in your early hours in Midgard, Svartalfheim, and the rest of the Nine Realms. And there you have it guys, um, make sure you smash that like, that subscribe button, click that notification bell so you guys can be notified on all of the new latest and greatest news out here in these gaming streets. 
And if you would like to jump into the PlayStation ecosystem, the Xbox ecosystem, or if you like to check out my merch, you know, order some clothing, or if you like to order games, rent games, buy games, just click the link down below in the description. Thank you and peace.